Hey guys, Russ here with bishopswest.com. And today, you know, this is the time of year when companies are giving out a lot of free plugins. I don't have any free plugins, but I'm going to do the next best thing and show you how to build an emulation of a plugin that's out there um, pretty quickly in Bitwig Studio. Now, before we get started, I wanted to remind you guys that I have a free guide available for you to download. It's called Accelerate Your Music Making in Bitwig Studio, and it's just a quick five steps to kind of optimize and streamline your music making. Uh, if you want to download it, it's just bishopswest.com slash bitwig setup. And if you enter your email address, then you'll be sent a link to download it real fast. So with that out of the way, let's start by going into Ableton. So to do this, I loaded up a, a Serum instance and uh, just to let you hear what it sounds like. Okay. So I'm using Serum because that way I can um, show you using the same sound in, in both Bitwig and Ableton. So the effect that I'm talking about is erosion. If you're not familiar with it, erosion is just, um, for me, I think it's an easy way to add a little bit of texture. It's you can either use a sine wave or noise um, to kind of modulate. So let me just stop talking and let you listen to it. Okay, that's the sine noise. And then wide noise is just adding a little bit of a stereo effect. Okay, so like I said though, I would mainly use it kind of as a texture. Um, just a little, more, little bit more background in Ableton's help. They say erosion effect degrades the input signal by modulating a short delay with filtered noise or a sine wave. This adds noisy artifacts or aliasing downsampling like distortions that sound very digital. Okay, so for me, the key things were modulating and filtered noise or a sine wave. So uh, I'm gonna cut away and let me switch to Bitwig and let's see if we can kind of create the same thing in Bitwig Studio. Okay, so here we are in Bitwig Studio. I've got that same Serum patch loaded up. Okay, so to recreate that plugin, um, the main goal I had was to be able to save it and load it up easily, just like it was a plugin. It's really going to be a preset, um, but I'll be able to name it and pull it up anytime I want to use it. Like I said, just for that little bit of texture. So. First thing I'm gonna do is um, look for an FX layer. And within that layer, I'm going to start with um, a ring modulator. So when we what we saw in that help file that was that it was being modulated um, and kind of doing a little digging around on the internet, this was kind of the way that it was doing it, it was using ring modulation. So if I put that in there, it automatically comes up with an oscillator, which is gonna be a sine wave. And then you can move only up to 10 kilohertz, which is fine. Um, but the other one was the erosion effect in um, Ableton Live went all the way up to 18K, but still. Okay, so that's already 
halfway there. What it doesn't have is um, any kind of white noise that we could use to modulate it. So I experimented with a couple ways to do this. One, the first thing I started with was having a separate track with white noise using the grid, but um, like I said, I wanted this to be all self-contained. So instead of doing that, I'm actually just going to go and um, find the FX grid, bring that in, and I probably could have used polygrid, either one would work, but when I type grid, FX grid is what came up. So I'm going to take a random noise generator. and I'm going to mute that layer. So what that gives me is this constant stream of white noise coming through as a source for the modulation. Now if I go back to the ring mod layer, I'm able to here where it says oscillator, click the drop down, go into Serum, FX Chains, and I'm going to choose FX Grid Pre. So this is um, letting me use that signal whether it's muted or not. You can see this post, it's got the levels grayed out because it's muted, but I can use the pre. And so now, there it again. You can hear that noise coming through, right? Now you'll notice that changing the frequency there doesn't really seem to change much. So the other thing I did was went in and just grabbed a filter. And what that allows me to do then is kind of change and sweep here and there. very similar to what we did with erosion in Ableton, right? Um, I'll probably, I don't think I need any resonance. The other thing though is I'll change this to a bandpass. I keep messing with the resonance, but. Okay, and then, you know, this is supposed to be a very subtle effect, so I'm gonna, right here, um, yeah, here, change this and probably just bring it way down, definitely below 10%. Okay, so really that's it, that's, already really close to what's going on with that erosion plugin in Ableton. Um, while I was playing around with it though, just to kind of take it to the next level, you know, I thought they have the sine wave generator, so we could do that, right? Um, So I want to put this down here. And so I thought it would be kind of fun to have this. So a way to be able to kind of switch between those two, number one, I would need, uh, where did I find it the other day? A select. And then logic button right here. I'm going to use this as a way to switch between them. Now, um, I'm still thinking about different ways to do this as I'm going through it, but when I set it up just as a test run, I kind of had this all the way up at 16 to 1. So 
So now I use the button to select the sign. And let's turn this mix up so we can kind of hear it. And hear that way up there, right? So, yeah, even as I'm thinking about this, there's different ways. What I might want to do is move this filter into the post effects there. That way we have the dry signal um, of serum coming through, but then the filter is only affecting what's going on with the ring mod. So let's try that. So that's good. The other thing about this setting it up in the grid like this is that uh, you're not just limited to noise or sign as your modulators. You could actually, or as your source, you could actually, you know, switch this out for a phase or for even, you know, a wavetable module right there. When this loads up, it actually loads up with all four of the standards, right? Um, so what you can do is so it's got some different character going in there depending on how much you want to add into it, mix into it. Um, so then once you've done this, then of course you're able to go back and now, because it's all contained in this FX layer, maybe start adding in some um, different controls. So for example, from here I might want to control, I'm going to go here, and probably the first thing I want to do is control the mix. Um, then I'll probably want to control the frequency on the filter from there. The other thing I might want to control would be within the grid, the index on this wavetable. Oh, and definitely I need to be able to control whether I'm using noise or a wavetable there. Okay, and then, so once I do all that, then I can just start hiding um, yeah, everything except those controls if I want to. too much for me. Right. 
So, <laughs> um, I hope you've enjoyed this. It's been kind of interesting for me just experimenting with this, seeing, number one, how close I can get it once I kind of understood what was going on with erosion, and number two, trying to even improve on it a little bit, uh, make it more interesting. So hopefully this is useful to you. Have a great day, and I will see you next time.